Hello YouTube. In today's video we're going to take a look at the uh, NAS here. We're going to be upgrading it to 4 terabyte drives. And uh, yeah, well, let's actually dig straight in, right? So this is my Synology DS215J. I bought this in, well, 2015. And uh, it's been running great ever since. Uh, I started off with a single 1 terabyte drive in there. Um, then I decided, well, that's not really enough, so I added a, or well, I replaced the one terabyte with a two terabyte drive, two terabyte green. That was in uh, 2016. I think no, that was 2015 already, just months after I bought it. Then I bought a year later. I added a uh, another two terabyte drive, a Western Digital Red drive. So I was like, well, in the end, I'll probably just pull or yank out the uh, the green drive when it's out of warranty and just add another two terabyte red. Would be a cheap. Uh, side grade and to get uh, this thing into a proper drive configuration or whatnot. So I did, uh, I did something else. I was looking around on the web and I saw that the Seagate Ironwolf drives were pretty good and I decided to jump on a pair of 4TB units for, uh, of, the, uh, of the Ironwolves. So today we're going to find out if they work. This is what a single of those drives looks like. This is a 4 terabyte Iron Wolf. Runs at 5900 RPM, if I'm not mistaken. This one was made on 17th of September 2017. Can we get that in focus there? Yep. It is SATA as fuck, so that should be good. Because it only takes SATA. <laughs> Every time I see it, that sort of cracks me up. Uh, so yeah, it's uh, of course the Iron Wolf line is part of the Guardian line of Seagate that's, that differentiates their drives nowadays. The Iron Wolf is their NAS line, the Skyhawk is their surveillance line, and Barracuda, which is a name we all are familiar with, is their line for regular consumer drives. There's also the Barracuda Pro for use in uh, business machines, or entry-level workstations I suppose. And here's the second drive. All right, so we got those out. Of course, before you do anything like this, like upgrading hard drives in a NAS that is running on a RAID array, always back up your data before you proceed. If something goes wrong, there's always a slim chance, but you just, you know, it's not negligible anyway. Always back up your data properly. This is your 1.5 ter terabyte drive. Uh, that I've got all the most important data of the NAS on. It's about 1.1 terabytes full right now. This NAS is about 1.2 terabytes, 1.3 terabytes full right now. And uh, that's pretty much uh, all I want to say about that. So let's proceed with the upgrade. I need to find my screwdriver, there it is. These things are very easy to take apart, luckily. And it's still in great shape. The fan barely has any dust on it. I guess it really helps if you just put it uh, in a fuse box cabinet or whatever you want to call it. It's nicely hidden on shelf there and uh, there's no dust getting in there for sure. Alright, so now I need to really think which part actually pulls forward and which one pulls back. And whether it was a clamshell system, it actually slides, right. Well, let's get that part out of the way. There is a bit of dust on the inside, so I'll have to think about cleaning this. And as you can see, just a regular 80 millimeter PC fan with a regular 3-pin connector, so that's always nice. I might look into actually getting a different fan for this. I'm actually, well, it might be actually a uh, 92, or no, it's probably an 80. I'll have considered changing that out if I keep this nice for a couple more years. Just for longevity's sake. Uh, where's my cloth? There we go. A lot of dust on this drive here on top. Alrighty. 
So let's pull out the green first. The green drive is now out of warranty as of July this year. So that's also a reason to get rid of it. I typically like to run my drives for as long as they're in warranty and after that I basically either use them in a PC of sorts or I just completely sell them off to someone else. I mean usually the smart data is just fine after a year or two or three. There's no problem there. I mean heck, I work my drives in my or the, the primary hard drive in my PC at work until about uh, a week ago uh, was a 500 gig Seagate with uh, about 30,000 hours I think and that thing was slowly starting to get into the warning zone but then again that was an El Cheapo Barracuda drive so that really that drive was nothing special at all so that green drive is going to my girlfriend so I don't need that anymore and, uh, yeah but also something, some drive that I noticed at work that I had. Uh, I was cloning a PC for a coworker of mine. I mean, she was still running an old Athlon based HP Pro from like 2008. And, uh, well, that was an interesting story overall, but that's the wrong one. But, uh, yeah. The drive that I cloned on, I figured it would be a bit faster because that thing was slow as molasses. But uh, as it turns out, the drive was uh, had about 60,000 hours on it. Well, it's really piss poor that I can't find a proper torque spit for this thing. Right when I'm doing a video. Maybe this one? Nope, that's too big. Jesus, flipping tap dancing Christ. What do you want from me? This one? Yeah, that one. So yeah, that disc really had a lot of hours on it. These drives probably don't. I mean, this red drive is only a year old by now. And it still has two years of warranty, so I will definitely be, uh, I'll definitely try to reuse it if I can. And if not, I'll just put it on the shelf uh, for emergencies or whatever. Or I'll put it in an external enclosure. Maybe that's a good idea. And I can use this as a backup drive in case my, uh, whoops, this USB Toshiba drive fails or whatever. Yeah, it's actually not, not a bad idea to use this for archiving. Well, this is the reason why I love doing YouTube videos live and not scripted and, uh, you know, with the with video shot first and then talked after. I usually get some pretty good ideas during the recording sessions, so I quite like doing this uh, video this way. All right. Okay, so now we can pull the red drive out. There we go. Two turbines with digital red, 64 megs of cache. How much cache does the other drive have? Oh, it's also 64. These are not SATA as fuck, these are just regular drives. <laughs> uh, let's see here. The red drive is from May 2016 and the green drive is from May 2015. Alright, good. Is a sign. By the way, I'm actually doing this in a stupid order. I shouldn't actually pull out the. Uh, I shouldn't actually put that drive away just yet. I want to sync that drive up to one of the Iron Wolves. So I need to put in a new Iron Wolf first. And then I actually need to reuse the red. And. Uh, Get the data on there. For now, I'll just secure the uh, iron wolf with two screws. And I'll do the same with the red because it's just for test now, so I can figure out where the 
whether that plan will actually work. One iron wolf in. And now we put the red back in. Got to change bit again. This is super inspiring. Ah, oh, Christ. Boom, and that's in. And one more. All right, so now we're ready to uh, fire it up and see if the drive is detected and whether we can actually uh, make it do an auto transfer of the data to a bigger drive. I've never actually tried this. Well, actually, I think I did this when I'm, no, when I changed from the one terabyte to the two terabyte drive, I basically pulled all the data off the NAS and uh, transferred it back over. So we only need the ethernet plugged in and the power lead. So let's do that. And we're done. Now I can turn it on and uh, I'm going to wait for it to boot and then we're going to take a look at the uh, Synology Disk Manager software and see if we can get this drive uh, detected and running properly. All right, we're at the desktop now. So we can now take a look at what's going on. So we're going to go to the Storage Manager. And as we can see, the disk group is now degraded. We only have one two terabyte drive showing up as part of the array. So if that drive would crash, all of our data would be gone. All right, so what it suggests to us here, the space is degraded. We suggest you replace the failing hard disk with one that is bigger or equal to size. Well, we have a bigger drive, so we can rebuild the array using the first Iron Wolf drive we just added. That's all fun and games. So here are the disks in question. This is actually quite funny. I mean, this is just a generic disk symbol with the uh, with digital red drive. And here is the Iron Wolf, 4 terabyte, which is not initialized yet. And this one actually shows the Iron Wolf logo. That's, that's, that's pretty snazzy. That is pretty snazzy. Anywho, without further ado, let's actually initialize that drive. We should be able to add it to the array. Let's go through the repair. We want to use disk 2 for the repair. We'll erase the disk, that's fine. Capacity of the array will be 1.81 terabytes. That is okay. We want to rebuild the array before we can add the second drive. That'll take a while. Okay, disk 2 is now added. And now it's going through all of the data, and then it will try to copy it over. There's a good chance that this will take a very long time for all of this data to be copied over properly. But that's no problem. We have the green drive out, and we have the second iron wolf waiting for uh, when the process finishes. So for now, we're just going to let it sit and do its job. And uh, once that's done, we can add the second Iron Wolf. We can then repair that degraded array. And then we'll have an array of four terabytes. So that should be pretty nice. Well, effectively, it should be about, well, 3.6, like it says right here, 3.6, four terabytes. That's what we'll end up with in the end.
But for now, we're just going to let it do its thing. All right, so the copying process is finished, so the array is now back uh, up and running. At least um, it was running on the uh, red drive, which I had just a second ago, yep, right here. So uh, the copying is done. So now we can start syncing up the uh, first installed Iron Wolf drive to the second one. And after that, the NAS is back up and running uh, as it was, except now with double the storage. So that's nice. And by the way, if you probably noticed, but uh, it is now the next day. It is in the evening, and uh, yeah, so the lighting is now a bit crap. But I just wanted to uh, record this part, nevertheless. I'm actually, gonna stand on the other side now, so I can block the last bit of light that I have, because I wanted to uh, do the finishing touch on video as well. I figured that would be a nice way to uh, end this upgrade video for you guys. So all we still have to do is get these screws in. There we go, that's one. And that's the wrong type of screwdriver. There we go, that's in. And now that's in properly as well. And there you have it. The DS215J now upgraded from two two terabyte drives to two four terabyte drives. And uh, yeah, we're gonna see how these Iron Wolf drives hold up in practice because they're still pretty darn new. Uh, I will probably also be using this NAS now to store my video files and do my video editing from it because I'm not really hitting this thing that hard uh, usually anyway and because I don't use an internal drive to store my video files and 100 megabits or 100 megabytes rather of transfer speed is more than enough for uh, what I do. I just do 1080p 30 and uh, I could probably edit just fine off of this. I mean I've edited off a USB external hard drive for the last uh, two years I think and that's been totally fine so this shouldn't be that much different. Anywho, I've been going on for way too long, I think. I hope you enjoyed this video. I thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.